Hey guys, so this is another video in the game design journey vlog blog thing. So uh, today we're actually going to talk a little bit about prototyping and what it takes to actually uh, get your game onto paper or pieces or whatever it is you're going to use for the specific type of board game you want to design. And today we're specifically going to talk about what I do when I prototype uh, the games that I start designing. Uh, I have some index cards, pencil, scissors, stuff to work with. So we're going to take a look at all of it and kind of what it takes to get your ideas onto paper and to start coming up with a decent prototype for your board game. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about prototyping. Uh, let's talk about when you're designing a game, uh, you need to get that idea down on paper or into some type of component for the game. And so today we're going to talk about deck building because that's what I'm currently working on uh, for a game is a deck builder. And so that's going to use a lot of cards. Now the first thing that you'll notice here is index cards. These things are amazing. They are super cheap. You can get them at Dollar General, Family Dollar, uh, any office supply store. I think this was like 50 cents. Uh, you get a hundred of them, so these really come in handy. Uh, they're great for making playing cards. Uh, they're they're not super thick, but they're pretty durable, durable enough to uh, basically make a card. Um, a lot of people will use uh, card sleeves as backers, uh, things like that, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, another great tool to get that I use a lot is the old paper cutter. Uh, this thing is awesome. I use it for pretty much everything. Um, I also, another great tool, scissors. And then another great tool that is very invaluable is, yep, the good old pencil. This is my basic prototyping setup, especially when I'm using deck builders. Uh, I got the index cards, the paper cutter, scissors, uh, and the pencil because you're gonna have to write a lot. So I basically start off, it's, it's super great. You have all your guidelines. Uh, poker size is what's typically used for deck building games, so that's three and a half by two and a half inches. Um, and so I normally just line this up, get me a little cut there, line it up at the 2.5, give it another cut, and there you go. I have a poker size playing card that I use uh, that's pretty standard for deck builders in most card games is that size. And then, yeah, so super easy super quick i mean you could do these three four at a time with the paper cutter um and there's so many different paper cutters out there this is just a cheap version uh i think i got this for maybe 10 to 15 dollars at hobby lobby years ago uh but it's super awesome you can cut three four at a time um and then yeah once you get those cut you spend a lot of time well writing it As you can see, these are all ones I've cut. This is what my first prototype for my game Alien Outbreak looks like. I just cut a bunch of these up and I just started writing on them. And uh, yeah, that's super easy. Uh, it takes time, obviously, so you're gonna do a lot of writing. Uh, but I mean, if you have to change anything, you're not set in stone. You can just erase it, uh, rewrite something else you need on there. Uh, and that's a super cheap and easy and affordable way to start getting your ideas down on cards that you're going to need. And like I said, some people will get uh, card sleeves with a nice firm backing that they'll cut these out right on them, tuck them in there to make them a little more durable. But you don't need to spend the extra money on that if you're just getting ideas down. And this is going to be your first run through. Like, uh, And I've played this uh, dozens and dozens of times and these have held up strong, held up great. Uh, the pencil stays on there. Uh, I've made so many changes that it's, it. yeah, I mean, you can make a lot of changes and not have to worry about it because it, it's pencil and it's nothing permanent. Uh, so this is my first stage in most of my prototyping uh, for games. Uh, sometimes you'll have to cut out little squares for tiles, depending on what the game is. But as far as uh, deck building games for my game Alien Outbreak that I'm working on, uh, this is my go-to setup. Super easy, super simple. And then once I kind of get the ideas for cards and I'm gonna start making the board, that's a whole different thing. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this is what the very first uh, game board looked like for my game Alien Outbreak. Uh, it's just, it was just made out on uh, just uh, graphic design software. Uh, this one was actually sent to me by the publisher. This was his uh, kind of rough idea of how he wanted the board to look like. So I took that. Uh, I printed it out on four separate sheets of paper, 
Uh, I just ran tape down the middle to kind of hold it. And you know, it's super papery and flimsy, but this is a prototype. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can tell where I put the pencil markings on there to name the locations, uh, starting positions, things like that. But this was super easy, super rough, but it's just so you can get an idea of, you know, to where to lay the cards down, what you're doing, and uh, you don't need anything fancy, nothing special. That's great about prototype is you're just getting ideas down. So this is what the first one looked like. Uh, and then obviously it, as you go along, it kind of upgrades a little bit. Now I, I had some, went in there, used a graphic program, uh, laid out some new location names, uh, cleaned it up a little bit, uh, got the game board looking you know, a lot better. So now I had a better of understanding of how the game was gonna play. I added turn sequences, what happens at the end of turns, just kind of for players to look at. Uh, and, and that's what that looks like. And then we also used uh, these things called uh, supports, which we made little little game things for the players. And this is also super rough. Just took printer paper, cut it out to the size that I wanted, and added. Uh, you know, we have the, the deck, the discard pile, uh, character abilities, things like that. This was just something rough that I had cut out once again, so I knew where I was going to be placing cards. How we were going to lay them out and you know just getting that rough idea again and then once you kind of figure that out you can do the same thing get you a graphics program uh you know you can use free stuff like gimp ink space uh photoshop illustrator stuff like that and then you always go in there and just kind of uh typed one up made it look a little bit better um and so now we have a better idea of how things are going to look on this prototype uh and it's just taking the next step so you build things up step by step and things just get better and better as you go. And what's great is we're still just using paper. We're still just using pencils. Uh, we're just uh, using free software that you can find, such as GIMP, uh, Illustrator, like I said. Uh, I use Clip Studio Paint because it's great for illustrators, and uh, it works really well for me. But And then the next step is you can start adding some graphics, which if you know it's been playtested good and you're good to move on to some graphics just for more prototyping, uh, you can do that. So let's take a look at that. Boom, there it is, look at that. Uh, Alien Outbreak, this was uh, after I had, you know, you saw the designs I had earlier, it was just plain white paper with stuff written out. Well, this is just some free graphics that I found online. Google is a great thing. Uh, Deviant Art, websites like that, you can find art that people will let you use. Uh, that's not commercial use, but you can use for private use. And since this is just a prototype, uh, I can use this art and kind of add it on there and then uh, be able to play it and play test it because um, I'm not selling copies, so you're able to use that art under a free license. Now this is cool. I actually made a little four panel folding uh, just using chipboard uh, and duct tape that you can just buy at your local craft store. And it was super simple to make. There's a lot of YouTube tutorials you can find. Uh, I'll link up to some of those YouTube tutorials in the description. Uh, so you can kind of check those out if you want to make one on your own. But this, like I said, I just use Clip Studio Paint, which you could also use Photoshop, GIMP, any of those other ones I've mentioned. And you can lay out the art, lay your graphics on top. I printed this out on four sheets of paper once again, cut them with some lines that I made, and then I just glued it up, and now we have an awesome board. And then after I did that, and I knew the cards were where I needed them to be as far as as, as far along as we are in the game design, I went ahead and actually printed those up as well. So now, instead of just having handwritten cards, we've actually got cards that have text on there. Um, you can actually, you know, they have values, uh, descriptions, but then these will look a lot cleaner than just your typical uh, handwriting on there. And so when you actually, you actually play test this with people, they're going to be able to have something to look at and understand a little bit more than just... Uh, you know, your, your chicken scratch handwriting. And as you can see, I have a lot because this game has about 280 cards. So it took a little while, but there's a lot of great free programs out there, which I'll link a lot of those programs, like I said, in the description. If you are starting to do your own prototyping, there's programs such as Nandec, which allows you to lay these cards out uh, and it prints it all out for you. Um, and it's really awesome. Well, it doesn't print it out, but it lays them all out for you to print. It's a great program. Um, and then after we also got the new uh, player mats finished a little bit more with more player reference with actual character abilities. And so this is basically what I call the stage three prototype of my game, 
where it's gone from chicken scratch handwriting to actual printed out uh, temporary graphics and art to use so when people play this they get a little bit more immersion and understand a little bit more what the game's gonna feel like now this obviously will not be the final art the final layout it might be the final layout we don't know that's why we play test things to see uh, any changes we need to make but super simple super easy guys when you're prototyping uh, pencil paper like I said scissors pencil uh, get yourself a little paper cutter. These things are awesome. All this is super cheap. Get it at any uh, craft store, Dollar General, Family Dollars, things like that. And that's kind of the, the analog, get your hands dirty version. Now, there are lots of great graphics programs, like I said. Let's take a quick look at some of those. Okay, guys, so here is uh, what it looks like on Clip Studio Paint, with the program that I use. Um, this is the first... Uh, uh, iteration of the game board that was sent to me uh, to design for uh, Alien Outbreak and this is uh, just kind of a rough draft and so this is what I took and decided to this is what I first printed out and I cut into four separate pieces and just kind of taped it all together and you know like I said as you start to grow and uh, advance your game when it comes to prototyping you start to make changes and you'll see kind of the growth of it so I went from this to this and as you can see I have a whole lot of I'm kind of unorganized with my layers but I'll, I'm gonna get better at being organized which you'll see later on that I did get organized with my layers uh, but uh, so it kind of uh, advanced to this and now you can see that this looks a little cleaner um, it's got the turn sequence end of action in order there and then from here it went to uh, I kind of just spaced things out a little more made uh, the deck a little bit bigger or the, the locations a little bit bigger. Um, and so you can see that as you start to grow with your prototypes and your game as you go along, things start to grow and things start to change. That's why you should never be married to an idea right away because things change and they advance. You know, just going from this to this is already a big change just on the game board. And then once I was fine with, oh, this all works, um, I decided, okay, I know this is going to go good. Let's add some art. Let's add some uh, ways to connect these locations. And that's where we came up with this. You know, like I said, I found the free art. I downloaded it, added it myself, created all these layers. Um, and this is what I love about using design software. Um, like I said, Clip Studio Paint, it's cheap. Uh, I think you can get it for around uh, 50 bucks for a pretty basic edition. Uh, if you want something a little more... Uh, there's GIMP, which is free, uh, Inkscape, all that good stuff that you can find. Um, any photo manipulating software, things like that, you can at least create some great basic uh, prototype stuff. I think you can even use Microsoft Word. I know people use that somehow. Uh, blows my mind a little bit. Okay, so this is just one tool for the digital part of prototyping. Another very, very important part that I highly recommend that everybody does is you need to learn Microsoft Excel and work with spreadsheets. Spreadsheets will save you so much time and keep you very organized. As you can see from my spreadsheet, there is a lot of stuff uh, attached to it. Um, my game has a lot of assets in there and it's just, this keeps me organized because when things change, I can just go make a quick, um, quick change in here and just, uh, you know, it updates it for me. And then, um, which I'll link to that program, like I said, Nandec, that you can research further. If I can just import this whole spreadsheet into this program called Nandec, tell it where to place stuff, and it, it makes all those cards for me, and then all I have to do is print it out and, you know, cut up all the cards, and we're good to go. Uh, so, highly recommend spreadsheets if you have Excel. Um, another thing to really you want to use is take advantage of uh, Google Drive. Because if you're working with other people or if you're somewhere else and you need to um, access your files, uh, Google Drive is great. Um, you can keep spreadsheets, documents, art, all that stuff in Google Drive. And these will save your life. So these are awesome to use. Um, so as far as digital, you, you know, get good in Excel, uh, Google Sheets, something like that to keep yourself organized. Find you a free image manipulation software where you can... Uh, you know, make game boards, stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, it these, these really come in handy and these will really advance your prototype along. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for this prototyping video. I hope that this information was useful and hopefully it gave you some ideas if you ever decide to 
design your own board game, or maybe this just gave you a cool glimpse into how I design my prototypes for my games. And uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to the rest of these videos. Um, I'm going to start uh, hopefully soon get that list up of themes that we're going to vote on for May when I start designing the first board game for the challenge. So be looking forward to that. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions about this video. Maybe I missed something or wasn't clear about something or maybe you just want to know more information. Leave a comment. Don't forget to like. Please subscribe so that way you can get uh, all the notifications when a new video comes out. And please share this with somebody and maybe they'll, they'll like to follow along with this journey. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.